what's up everyone, Game Dad here, coming at you guys with a different kind of collection video today. And that is because I have very few games for each of these different systems. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at everything that is currently in my Neo Geo Pocket Color collection, my Gamecom collection, my R-Zone collection, my N-Gage collection, my Wonderswan Color collection, and my Wonderswan Crystal collection. Sounds like there would be a lot, but trust me, it's actually not that many games. I do not have a lot of games for these handhelds right now. But come with me as we check out all the games that are on the list. SNK vs. Capcom Match of the Millennium was released by SNK in 1999, and this is a classic versus kind of franchise game. So you go in and you get all your different Capcom characters, mainly like Street Fighter, things like that, against all the SNK characters, thinking like, you know, Samurai Showdown, Final Fight, all these different kinds of games, and you pit them against each other. It's actually pretty awesome for a handheld. Up next is Metal Slug First Mission, released by Ukiyote in 1999, and this definitely brings the arcade feel into the handheld. Graphically, it's not as great, but the gameplay is still there, it's solid, and it's still just a really fun game in general. If you're a fan of the Metal Slug franchise, you'd definitely be a fan of this game. Up next we have Neo Turf Masters, released by Saurus in 1999, and this game is exactly what you would expect it to be. It is a golf game on the Neo Geo Pocket Color. That's pretty much it. Graphically, it's actually quite impressive for what it is, but overall, yeah, it's just another golf game. Up next is Pac-Man, released by Namco in 1999, and not really much to say here. There have been hundreds of different variations of the Pac-Man game, and this is just another one. Colorfully, it looks pretty good. It looks almost, I would say, arcade perfect, but I wouldn't know for sure without really deep diving into it. But overall, yeah, it's just classic Pac-Man on a Neo Geo Pocket Color. And here we have Samurai Showdown 2, released by Saurus in 1999. And if you've ever played a Samurai Showdown game, this is essentially the same thing with kind of dumbed down graphics. They go pretty monochrome with them. You do get color and stuff like that, but as you can see, even this character is just total grayscale. The game is fun, but I'd rather play it in an arcade instead. Here we have Sonic the Hedgehog Pocket Adventure, released by SNK in 1999, and this isn't like any of the other Sonic games. It has the same basic principle, but the graphics are definitely a little more simplistic, and it gives you new levels and things to go through. So, it's pretty fun. You get to play a Sonic game on the go, but overall, I like the original Sonic games more. And here we have Batman and Robin, released by Tiger Electronics in 1997, and this is the first Gamecom game in this video. And as you can see, these cartridges are very small, and I was not able to find a working emulator, so I couldn't really show any footage of this, and there's definitely no way to capture it off the device. But small little cartridges and lots of black and white gaming. Up next is Duke Nukem 3D, released by 3D Realms in 1996, and... This is another game where everything, just like all Gamecom games, are all black and white. It doesn't look that great. The games experience a ton of slowdown. I mean, it was pretty ambitious, the kind of titles that they were going for in licensing, but overall, it's just not that fun of an experience. And here we have Lights Out by Tiger Electronics in 1995. This game was... From what I understand, the only pack-in that they ever gave with it. And it really showcased the touch controls that a Gamescom has. So with this, you tap on lights to turn them on or off. And it will use a mathematical formula to figure out what lights are going to keep turning off and on. And it's just a puzzler. And here we have Quiz Whiz Cyber Trivia, released by Tiger Electronics in 1997. And if you've ever played a game like Jeopardy or anything like that, this is essentially the same thing. They tried to go more, you know, radical and cool, like early 90s style with it, and they just failed miserably at that. Up next is Williams Arcade Classics, released by Tiger Electronics in 1996, and this is a compilation of a bunch of different Williams games. So pretty cool that they were able to get a license like this, but overall, since everything is black and white, there was not a lot of system memory, anything like that. Everything just plays slow and at incredibly small frame rates. And here we have our first R-Zone game, that is Area 51, released by Tiger Electronics in 1996. Again, Tiger always went big with their licensing, and at least these ones included little manuals. Sometimes you get a little cover on the games like this, but these 
harken back to the days of the old Tiger Electronic handhelds, except what this would do was shine a light through this, and you would wear a contraption on your head, and it would put it right in front of your eye. So probably not great. And here we have Batman Forever, released by Tiger Electronics in 1995. And these games are far more simplistic than the games on the Gamescom, but I don't know. I mean, it feels like strapping a Tiger Electronics handheld just to your head. That's pretty much all this console was. Up next, we have Panzer Dragoon, released by Tiger Electronics in 1995. Obviously a great franchise, great game, and absolutely horrible on this handheld. It's just, it's not fun, and... It, there isn't really much to the game at all. Here we have X-Men Legends, released by Barking Lizards Technologies in 2005, and this is actually an N-Gage game. So the N-Gage, affectionately called the Taco, was a cell phone that you could get back in the day, and in the memory card area, there was another slot to be able to slide in SD card games. And this is the only one that I have. I have seen a few others in different game stores and stuff. They're always pretty expensive, but... Yeah, I mean, it was kind of cool playing on a phone. Now here we have Final Fantasy, released by Square in 2000, and this is on the Wonderswan Color. Now if you've ever played the original Final Fantasy, it's a fantastic game. Later versions were definitely better, but it's pretty cool to be able to see this on the handheld, and if you don't know what a Wonderswan is, definitely go look it up. It is an awesome Japanese handheld console. Last up for this video is Inuyasha Kagome no Yumi Nikki, released by Bandai in 2002, and this is one of several Inuyasha games for the Wonder Swan Color or the Swan Crystal, and the game is pretty fun. It is definitely story-driven, so it's kind of difficult for me to play since I can't read Japanese, but overall, once you get into the gameplay, it's a pretty cool game. So there you have it everyone, those are all of the games that are currently in my Neo Geo Pocket Color Collection, my Gamecom Collection, my R-Zone Collection, my N-Gage Collection, my Wonderswan Color, and my Wonderswan Crystal Collection. So lots of different handhelds, not that many games in each one, so I wanted to put them all into one video for you guys. Now if you have any suggestions to help me beef up these parts of my collection, let me know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, please be sure to also hit those like and subscribe buttons, as well as that little notification bell so that you get an alert every time I get a new video coming out. Now, as always, I'm Game Dad. I thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you later.